Badger, 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 Yeah, he's hey, nice. Between getting banned in China and facing disappointing iPhone sales, Apple probably isn't feeling the holiday spirit. Crazy Kwanzaa. And the latest lump of coal in their stocking is another court battle. A federal lawsuit in the US alleges that Apple lied about the specs of the iPhone 10 lineup. Specifically, the complaint states that the screen's diagonal size is a little more than a tenth of an inch smaller than what was advertised. The claim yes, we gotta pay attention to those details. The claim that the phones are all screen was also claimed as being false. Definitely. And because each pixel doesn't have three RGB subpixels, the official resolution is also inaccurate. I knew it! Okay. Although it's unclear how much money Apple will have to cough up if the plaintiffs prevail, they are seeking class action status. So if you bought an iPhone 10, maybe look out for a handsome check that will allow you to like, see a movie maybe. If you're a Californian that relies heavily on texting, your wallet is probably breathing a little easier today as the State Public Utilities Commission has scrapped a plan to tax your text messages. Originally, Sacramento wanted to tax any cell phone plan that charged for texting in order to fund programs for folks in underserved areas. Although telecommunications taxes for this purpose are common across the US, an additional measure specifically targeting texting, unsurprisingly, was met with backlash from both consumers as well as a major trade association representing a number of large wireless carriers. The change of course came after an FCC action that classified texting in a way that no longer allowed the tax under existing California law. I wonder if maybe they'll try to tax snaps next, but that might also lead to full scale revolution. Snap, like from Snapchat? Tax Snapchats? John, you're out of touch. No one uses that anymore. It's all TikToks. Don't tax my TikToks! Consoles have become ever more PC-like in their architecture over the years, and Valve looks like it might be blurring the lines even further, as a new update to a beta version of Steam appears to enable cross-platform play between the PC and Xbox One. Although this functionality is currently available on certain titles in the Windows Store as part of Microsoft's Xbox Play Anywhere program, having this kind of cross-play on Steam would potentially open up lots of other games for play on both PC and console without having to buy the same title twice, and possibly enabling cross-platform multi player. Indeed, the industry looks to be moving in this direction as a whole, as Epic Games has enabled cross-play between almost every major platform for Fortnite, and they're releasing a toolkit to help other devs enable the feature as well. No word yet on when this feature will be officially released or how many games will be supported, but I'm just hyped to be able to play Hello Kitty Island Adventure on four different devices. Can I get an amen? Heck yeah! I don't know what that game is. And now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Mass Drops Control Keyboard. It's constructed with a solid CNC aluminum frame with a built-in switch plate that makes it stable and extremely durable. Great for fighting off zombies in a pinch. Control is fully programmable with RGB lighting and QMK firmware, which makes it much easier to program and gives you more control. At checkout, you can choose between Cherry MX, Kaihua, and Halo switches. So for a great custom keyboard experience, pick it up today on Mass Drop for a limited time through the link below. Oh yeah. Quick bits, what's that? Well, you're about to find out. Do you not have a smartphone with a fancy portrait mode for dramatic blurry backgrounds? Well, Facebook will be giving you an assist as they announced today that their messenger camera can now do this for you natively. So if you want to trick your Instagram followers into thinking you can afford an expensive phone, now would be a good time to do it. Even though this feature is like on every phone now basically. But if it's not. Messenger. The Met Police in London are going to be testing facial recognition cameras in a few high traffic areas on Mondays and Tuesdays. Only those days, that's when all the criminals are there. Faces will be checked against a wanted database, though the cops say anyone who declines scanning won't be viewed as suspicious. Personally, I just don't want the police to see that weird growth on my chin. There's some definite crossover between gamers and comic book enthusiasts and digital comic provider Inky Pen Inky Pen is coming to, hoping to capitalize on this by coming to Nintendo Switch starting today. The service will focus on independent comics, but should also feature manga in the future for a price of $8 per month, in case you need some reading material after you rage quit Smash Ultimate. Oh, I do that all the time. Falcon's OP. Is he? No. Is it too much effort to unlock your car with a key fob? If so, you might be interested in Hyundai's new system that can unlock and start a car with just a fingerprint. The feature will launch next year and will be exclusive to China for the time being, but there is, but there is a one in 50,000 chance of a false positive. So do keep an eye out for people inappropriately touching your SUV. 
And if you shop for groceries on Amazon, you might notice a few things disappearing from their selection, as they're cutting back on items that they can't turn a profit on due to high shipping costs. Beverages, specifically, are a prime target. I get it. You get that? That's a good joke, as they're rather weighty but inexpensive. So be prepared for more bulk buying. Maybe there can be a Pepsi dash button where they'll just bring you soda in a 50 gallon drum. <laughs> that sounds unhealthy. Well, that's it for now, so we'll see you back here on Wednesday for another 50 gallon drum of tech news that will pour down your throat in less than 10 minutes. John, that sounds weird.